In this video, I want to show you just a couple of reasons why I use the Guava libraries in practically every Java project that I do. To find Guava, you can do a search for something like Guava Java, and this is the link that we want. And to take the simple approach, let's just download this jar file. So over in my uh, over in Eclipse, I have an empty project. Um, what I'm going to do is make a new directory, a new folder called lib. I'm going to drop that jar in there. Uh, there. You can do this through the operating system shell or a graphical file manager. Um, I'll do it from Eclipse's importer, uh, not because I like it, but because it is so awkward. <laughs> it's a good thing to know how to get around in. Uh, so let's see, we want uh, something from the file system. Uh, let's see, from a downloads folder. There it is, except we can't, don't select it there. We select it here. There we go. Now it shows up in lib. Uh, right now, it's just a file in a directory, but if I right-click on it, I can choose Build Path, Add to Build Path, and now I have access to all of the Guava libraries. So let me show you some of the things I like to do with this. I'm going to start with a very simple example. You probably write code like this pretty regularly. We can make a list of string, list equals new, and now we have to say if we want an array list or a length list. Um, in uh, the bad old days, you had to give the type here as well. You know, let me do Control shift o to organize imports so you can see that uh, this all compiles. Um, so in the bad old days, you had to specify the type here too. In more recent releases of Java, you have the diamond operator, so you can skip that. Um, and, uh, you know, I was using Guava before this diamond operator came out, so this first example may not resonate with you, but there's a really handy utility class in Guava called lists. And you can see it provides all sorts of nice utility methods for creating and dealing with lists. So for example, if I say new array list, that's it. I've got a new array list. Uh, there's a couple of things I want to put in there to start off with. Mm, that works. Uh, I can also go in here and say I want a new array list with initial capacity or with some expected size. And so depending on your situation, you can use uh, different static factory methods here. And so the advantage here is the usual advantage of static factory methods. Instead of relying on a constructor like this, and then hoping you have some understanding of what that number means, uh, we use these named methods out of lists. And there's an equivalent uh, maps class too. So if you have a, a map, say, from integer to string, which is something I end up doing pretty regularly, you get all kinds of different options if you want it to be any new map or hash map or uh, tree map options, concurrent maps. Um, so part of Guava is this rich collection of uh, Java collections additions. So uh, nice pieces that add on to what Java already provides for collections. One of my most favorite uh, collections types in Guava that's not just a wrapper around something Java already has is immutable list. So I can make something like this again. Immutable list comes from Guava. Immutable list of, let's say there's just three elements here. There. So now this list that I've created cannot be changed. If I try to change it, I'll get an exception because this is an immutable list. One of the things I was talking about recently in one of the other videos was uh, defensive copies. So sometimes you have a method like this that takes a list as an argument. So we know, that, well, yeah, let me bring that back actually. So we know we don't want to do something like this because now my list here, that's this list, references the same object as the one that got sent in. And that's no good because I have an aliasing problem. I usually would look more like this. Um, immutable list is a very uh, fast, lightweight, and efficient way to make a copy as long as we know we're not going to change it. So if this list is coming in here, we want to make a defensive copy, we can say that. And the implementation of immutable list is very clever. So this is a, a high performance method here. This works very well. Um, another thing that I like to do with Guava, let's see, let's clean this up a little bit. There's a really handy class called preconditions that gives you access to several uh, static methods for doing common preconditions. Let's look at an example. Let's say my constructor here takes some argument s. And 
I want s to, I want to make sure that s is not null. So one thing I could do is say if s is null, throw new illegal argument exception, something like this. Oh, let's just uh, take a simple approach. Um, so of course we can do that. Um, preconditions give us a nice one-liner for that. So we can say preconditions dot check not null s. So it uh, it reads a little nicer. You don't have to think about what is the equality checking. Now, admittedly, it was pretty idiomatic, so there's not a, a whole lot of complexity there. Um, but I'll point out a very cool thing about check not null is that it returns its argument type. So we can do something like this. So we can say, oops, here we are. This dot string is that. So in one line, we can do a very common operation, which is copying a uh, parameter value into a local field, um, and at the same time check to make sure it's not null. If it was null, it would throw an exception. Finally, one other thing that I use in Guava of fairly regularly is their range concept. So I find this comes up a lot in games. Let me give you an example. Um, I was working on a, uh, some game programming just the other day, and I had some parts of code that assumed that a percent was going in the range from 0 to 1. Um, right? So if I want to say 50%, that would be 0 0.5. Now, that's a, a nice way to handle percents because this works very well with things like uh, generating random numbers. Right? If I take a new random and get the next double, or whatever that method is called, it returns a, a value from 0 to 0.9 repeating. So that's nice. Um, but I had other pieces of code that were dealing with percents in the range 0 to 100, and that's convenient because when I print them to the screen, I want to show 50. So it doesn't matter so much which one I chose. The problem was I had different assumptions in different parts of the code. But what I really want to say here is that there is there's a range, right? In this whole discussion, I'm talking about this range 0 to 100, or this range 0 to 1. So what I ended up doing was writing a unit test that looked like this. So I was looking at some global configuration for a game world like this, and I want to make sure that some percent value was in an, in an expected range. So I can say, uh, so of course I don't have JUnit in this project, so it's going to complain about not being able to compile, but that's all right, you get the idea. So I can say um, assert true w dot some percent uh, is in a given range. So let's make a range. Range. See again, it comes right out of guava, com uh, Google .com and collect. So I can make a range of, in this case, I'm dealing with floats. And there's some very nice uh, static factory methods here. I can say I have a closed range from 0 to 1, for example. And we'll stick some Fs in there to make it compile. So this uh, range object gives me a Java object that represents the concept that in discrete math I would write this way. Closed range. So now I can say, well, let me assert it's true that range contains w dot percent. So this way I can ensure that my percent values are in the 0 to 1 range and not something like, like 50. Um, I find that very often people will represent ranges implicitly by writing control structures around them, loops. Uh, but range here is pretty useful. Um, so there's four reasons why I like to use Guava. Uh, nice wrappers around creation of collections, the immutable list class, preconditions, which I use all the time, and range. There's a lot more in there. You can take a look. It's, uh, it's free and it's all open source. I encourage you to try it.